Hey guys, it's Arcade and today I'm gonna show you some useful tips and tricks for the playlist. I did the same video on Piano Roll, which you guys really liked. So today it's gonna be about the playlist. I'm gonna show you things that you probably didn't even know about. And hopefully you can learn something new. Most of the tips are going to be about the playlist, but some of them will just have something to do with the playlist. Anyway, so let's get started with tip number one. So if you are not organized in your projects at all, just like me, I usually have tons of patterns, audio clips and everything. Anyway, in the project you can use one trick to delete the useless patterns or audio clips so if you want to delete the clips that you are not using in the project just go right here go to picker panel go to select unused click on patterns as you can see I created these two patterns before but I didn't use them in the playlist so we can just delete them so it will automatically select them and then you can just right click and choose delete so it will delete all the useless patterns that you have the ones that you didn't use in the actual playlist in the project itself so yeah so if you are trying to clean up your project file this is a good tip to use another thing you can do is uh, go to picker panel again and choose the show empty patterns it will basically show all the available patterns you have and if you prefer creating patterns just by clicking on them and then putting something in this could speed up your workflow instead of going to plus naming it and stuff like that so yeah this is just based on your preference Another tip we can do when for some reason some of your stuff in the playlist is not quantized and it's just like offbeat, maybe your sample was kind of short or longer and you copied it and it's not snapped to the grid like this, you can go right here, go to tools, quick quantize start times and it will quantize everything that is not snapped to the grid. Another useful trick is if you like to create big chunks of your songs in one pattern, for example I have the drums right here in one pattern, usually you would use this for bass melody and chords if you have them in one pattern, you might want to use this trick which is splitting all the sounds to separate patterns. So this is not directly in the playlist, you just uh, select the pattern you want to split, then you go to split by channel. And now it created new pattern for each drum and it stacked them on top of each other. So now you can edit everything separately in a new pattern. As I said, this is mostly useful for when you have piano, bass and chords in one pattern and you wanna change the arrangement. So you will probably prefer using them separately, but you can use this for the drums as well. So if you split your tracks like this and you want them back together, you can actually put them all in one track like this, right click and choose merge pattern clips and now they are back together of course now we have a bunch of useless patterns so we can use the trick from before select unused patterns and delete them another trick you can use if you have a pattern like this and you want to create a wave file from it right click on the track go to consolidate this track from track start yeah and then just click start and it will automatically create a WAV file and mute the original file. So if you want to save CPU usage, this is a great tip for sure. It also groups the tracks and if you want to mute the whole group, hold ALT and then click the group, it will mute the whole group and if you just want to mute each track, do it as usual. Another thing that is not directly in the playlist is the clicking mode. So I'm gonna show you on this sound. As you can see at the end, you can hear a little click when the sample cuts off. So double click on the sample and here's a the clicking mode, choose crossfade bleeding. But now if you cut the end short by holding ALT and dragging the mouse, you can see it will naturally fade away. And now you can hear no clicking sound. So yeah, you can use this from both sides of the sample. It's basically gonna get rid of the click, but you can also use it in other ways if you just wanna have the sample start off with some, some sort of a fade in or something like that. So yeah, as you can see, the drums here are muted. If you wanna unmute them, you use this tool right here and you just click on the drums and they will be unmuted. You can use this for any sound in the playlist. This tool, the pencil, is the most common to use. Basically it draws one of whatever you have selected and then we have the paint brush and it uh, draws as many as you want until you hold the brush. So yeah, you can do stuff like this. Another little thing is to make samples unique. So you have a sample here and let's say you want to keep this sample, but also you want to have another one that is pitched down. So let's uh, hold shift and duplicate this by holding shift and 
clicking on it, dragging with mouse. And now click this icon, choose make unique. And then you have two samples that are the same, but you can edit them separately. So you can decrease the pitch of this one. And this one will stay the same. Also, if you want to work with just a part of the sample, it's pretty good to use the button make unique as sample because if you just make unique it will make unique the whole sample but if you cut it down like this and then choose make unique as sample you can actually save the sample in your computer and you will only work with this part of the sample so now you cannot extend it furthermore this can be useful if you're working with vocals that are big and you keep changing the pitch and stuff and if you would be using the whole vocal it would take a while to restretch and stuff like that but you can just select the part of the vocal make unique a sample and only work with that part so yeah another useful thing is to notice these buttons here the stretch button for example if you don't have it selected you will basically cut the samples but if you select the stretch button it will stretch them like this and speed them up if you do it like I did. Or you can stretch them the other way and slow them down. And if you wanna have the same pitch of the sample, just double click it and choose auto. So yeah, let's put it back. So that's the stretch option. Another thing that can be useful for maybe people who try to make mixes in FL Studio is the crossfade option. So if you have two sounds like this that they overlap, you can right click one of them, do crossfade with track one, which is the other audio clip, and it will create automation clip of a crossfade and then you can do the same for the other one. And now you have a little crossfade in a matter of seconds. So yeah, it can be useful for any type of stuff. Another thing you can do if you want to switch audio clips real fast, exchange them for another one, you can just click this, choose select source channel and you can exchange this clip for another one like this, just by selecting another clip from the menu. And this works with the patterns as well. Another little trick is this chop option. Once again, click this icon, choose chop and you can actually chop your samples in a few different ways. One of the ways is just by auto slicing it. So maybe choose dual auto slicing. And as you can see, it created the slices and now we can easily edit them. It's way better than to doing it ourselves. If you wanted, you could do it yourself with the slice tool, which works like this. But FL Studio is pretty good at recognizing where the samples, where the hits actually start. So yeah, there are a bunch of chops you can use and you can experiment with different ones and you don't have to use this for the drums only, you can use this for other sounds as well. Let's get rid of the de-clicking mode. So yeah, there are different patterns of the chops which is kind of nice. You can experiment with your loops and samples. Another thing you can do is create automation clips from here. Just click this button again, go to automate, volume. And if you have an automation clip, there are a few ways you can edit it. Just by right clicking, you create new points, but you can enable these two icons. When you choose step, you will actually, you can just hold your mouse and create steps like these automatically. And if you hold ALT key, you will be really precise. And if you hold SHIFT key, it will create these 90 degrees angles. That's for the step one, the slide just works normally as you are used to. And also, if you double click the automation, you can change the LFO speed and just create some crazy automations. Last but not least, a few of really quick shortcuts. I actually have this mousepad by Inside Audio that has all the shortcuts for FL Studio on it. So that can be helpful. If you want to check that out, link will be below. So some of the shortcuts are hold control and your mouse to create a selection, hold control B to put tracks one after another. As you can see, the start times, the start times are not right here. So you can go to edit tools, quantize start times. By holding ALT key, you move the patterns and audio clips freely, otherwise they snap to the grid, and by holding SHIFT, you duplicate them. 
You can also hold Ctrl and drag your mouse around the timeline and then hold Ctrl B to duplicate the whole selection. And yeah guys, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks and I'm sure you learned a few new things about FL Studio. I myself learned a few new things when creating these videos. So if you like this video, make sure to check out the other one I did for Piano Roll. It was made in a similar fashion. So if you like this one, you will surely like that one. Anyways guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.